Tell me about this. The World's Worst Children 3. Mm. Well, it follows The World's Worst Children 1 and The World's Worst Children 2. That's very good. That's the big news. That's very Basically, good. it's ten short stories about the worst children in the world. So I've already done... It's all new stories. And I really love writing these books because the emphasis is completely on the humour and they're very visual. You can see there's illustrations oh, the on every page. And you know, I go into schools up and down the country and I meet a lot of reluctant readers, lots of kids, often boys, who never read books. And I thought, I want to do a book right. especially for them. Mm. I don't want to leave those kids behind, you know, because you can meet an eight-year-old who's read all of the Harry Potter books and you can meet a 12-year-old who's never read a book in their life. Sure. So there's a big difference in the way children read. And I just thought, I want to make something just really, really fun with, they you know, no, no big sort of overarching themes or anything, just silly and funny. Um, and a laugh and good, yeah, and so, they want to dip in and dip out of so all the different stories. Yeah, so I had a, I had a lot of fun writing them, and I'm I think it's going to be turned into a cartoon series as well soon, which is very exciting. Ooh. So um, that's out next week. Um, so I'm wow. really excited. I've been writing children's books now for ten years. I can't believe it's ten years. That's incredible, and the response it's before that you, you had. were born. I know. Well, actually, <laughs> it's before some new readers now. Yes, you'll be I getting. Know. Um, I know. And they I weren't go, even born when you wrote your first book. Yeah, and I go into schools and there's you know six-year-olds, eight-year-olds I'm talking to, and they Amazing. have no idea about my previous life as a rude comedian. <laughs> uh, well, I still am, I guess. Yeah. And. Um, uh, and, yeah, they were not born when I was publishing wow. my first book. I think I'll know I've made it as a writer if one day someone comes up to me and says, uh, I used to read my books when I was a kid and now I read them to my child. Exactly. I think that's when you know... Do you read this to your wee boy? I try not to push my own books on my right. child. OK. I feel like there's lots of great books out there. I think <laughs> if he chooses that, that's great. For and sure. I do I do read them to my nephews as well, but I don't want to be always pushing my books. <laughs> I get no, I completely <laughs> they'll get They'll be in therapy one day going, oh, oh, oh he all made I had, me do he, this. Made, he only read his own books to me. <laughs> he was so, a very strange person. Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, there's loads of great books out there. I mean, some, sometimes, sometimes, if he's drawn to it. Oh, for sure, of course. Mm. The thing about you is, though, that you, you must be a child... You must be like, you know, but you think oh, yeah. like a child because well, you oh, can bye. never... Bye-bye, Bertie. He's, He's had enough. He's fine. He'll just, he can toddle him. He can do whatever he He's likes. There, he can do whatever he wants. He's so, so good. And, he really uh, is. Beautiful. But you can never patronise kids because they know they know right away and they've got no filter. So they'll tell oh. you if they don't. If they, oh, they'll yeah. be going, oh, well, yeah, this one's all right, but no. Nah. Yeah, I've had kids who go, oh, yeah, I really like Gangster Granny. And they say, oh, did you like Grandpa's Great Escape? No, I thought it was boring. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, thank you very much. <laughs> but that's the brilliant thing about children. It's they great. are completely honest. And, you know, children don't finish a boring book. No, no, they don't just put it down. Yes. I yes. mean, you must have read some really boring books over the years. I have. People were writing them. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and so it's a wonderful thing to write for kids. And, uh, and also it's a big thing sometimes because kids say, you know, or parents say to me, I couldn't get my child to read a book until they read yours. And sometimes That's it's the amazing. first book they ever read. And I don't know about you, but I remember the first books that I oh, read. Oh, yeah, very much so. Stigger the Dump, Child in the Chocolate Factory, Day of the Trippets. I remember the excitement yeah. of finding a book and, and reading it myself. And it's all an amazing responsibility. But you do so many other things, but is this the thing you're most proud of? And the letters is. you get from kids, that connection yeah. you get with them? I think them? it is. It's a special kind of relationship um, I think the author has with the reader. And it is, it's more like something that hopefully will last. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I love doing Britain's Got Talent. Of course. It's super it's fun. It's great fun. But as soon as it's off TV, people forget about it. I mean, even sometimes <laughs> the day after the final, People say, who won? And I struggle to remember. <laughs> it's like, oh. it's, it's weird. You go, oh, yeah. I don't know. That was then. Yeah. Was um, then. Um, so, but, you know, I love, I love doing it. I love doing all these things. Yeah, but it's this, great this, that this you This is the thing I, I, I get, I guess, most satisfaction from. Because they have a week in June that's like Williams week, isn't it? Where kids can, I mean, for goodness sake, or most or people else. just get a day. You get, get an entire a week. week. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I've got a week. But, no, it's very exciting. So I think there's lots of activities happening with schools. And you can go into schools and then there's all that contact with which is great. And Britain's Got Talent is a hoot, and you are Thank the you. only person that can get away with the things you get away with with Simon Cowell. I don't know how I have got away with that. I love it. It's hilarious, because sometimes he just does not know what to do with you. No. He's no, not quite sure how well, to respond. Well, you could always kind of get the better of him, however hard he tries. I mean, there is stuff also that never makes the edit mm -hmm. the, on the day. I can imagine. It's really, really funny. <laughs> Am I allowed to tell you a couple of stories? Yes, please do. Well, like, we had this... <laughs> <laughs> we had this guy come on, he was like ballroom dancing, and he happened to be a Mr. Gay UK. 
And I said, oh, thank you, Mr. Gay UK. We'll now go over to Mr. Bicurious UK. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, the, the producers were, like, hooting with laughter. And, they were, and I was like, oh, can you, can you use that? No, 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 no. no, no. So, so, yeah, there's loads of things. If you're lucky enough to be in the audience... Oh, you must have said use, I mean, we really want to one day do an X-rated version of the show. You should. Where we you can should. really say what we think. Wow, can you imagine? I don't know if we'd be able to put that on anywhere. No, I think it would finish our careers for good. That would be the end out. of that. That yeah. would be the end of that for sure. Does it get really competitive between the four of it you? It does though? because Simon Cowell is so competitive. Right. He needs to. He's competitive about every single thing you could be competitive about. He even said to me one day, "Who do you think's better lucky? Better looking, my son or your son?" I said, "Well, my son is obviously better looking, but the good thing is you're rich, so you can pay for your son to have plastic surgery." <laughs> <laughs> he said. He said. He said to his partner, Lauren. Lauren. David just said everything needs plastic surgery. <laughs> but you didn't say that. Yes, you I did. Just... <laughs> but, but you were provoked. There's actually nothing we kind of wouldn't say to each other. Hey, we're like brothers. We love. We sort of love each other and hate each other in equal measure. Exactly. He once said to me, "You're only happy when I'm unhappy," and he said, "I'm only happy when you're unhappy." <laughs> so it's a really weird relationship and Do very you know what? genuine. Long. May it continue. Thank you. And good luck. I'm saying good luck with the world's worst children three, but you don't need oh, to. And thank you for bringing Bear oh, in. Isn't he beautiful? He's an angel that floated down from heaven. He's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you so You've much. You've a lovely day. We're going to keep talking.